Hi everyone, so we have the quarterly and yearly information now for both DHT and Euronav tanker companies. So I'll be going through the latest news and seeing how the thesis is tracking. If you haven't seen my oil tanker thesis videos before, I highly suggest watching part one and part two as I go through in detail why I am investing in these assets. Now I'm also planning to do another update in a few weeks when I get TNK and Diamond S shipping information, but that's a few weeks away so I can do DHT and Euronav right now. Twenty twenty was the most profitable year for DHT on record. Net income came in at two hundred sixty six million dollars, which is about a dollar eighty four per share. Considering the share price has been around five six dollars for most of the year, that would give DHT a price to earnings ratio of only three point five. Now, this exceptional year was clearly because of the craziness that happened earlier in the year with the oil contango. That was when the future price of oil was worth more than the current price of oil. So people were buying oil and storing it on ships and taking advantage of the future price. Now this drove demand to crazy high levels for oil tankers and there was a lot of money being made. Remember when there were all those pictures of hundreds of oil tankers sitting off the coast as floating storage? Now since Q2, the industry has been in a far more difficult position. But they made so much money in Q2 that well-managed companies like DHT were able to improve their balance sheets for the future poor conditions. I think comparing 2019 to 2020 regarding revenue and profit is a little unfair. 2020 was an exceptional year for DHT and not a sign of a better business. It was just that oil contango. But what is fantastic to see is the net debt has halved in just this one year and this is good management. Now turning to Q4, well, it was a tough quarter for all of the tankers. Because oil demand hasn't returned to pre-pandemic levels, there is simply not as much oil needing to be moved around the world. So all the tankers that are busy in normal conditions are struggling to get work right now. DHT reported a tiny profit for Q4 of just four cents per share. And DHT currently has 16 of its vessels on time charters. A time charter is just a pre-existing contract at a specific rate per day. The average of these 16 fixed rates is $41,965 per day, which is very strong considering the market rate has been fluctuating around about $20,000 per day. But of the 16 vessels on time charters, seven are estimated to be re-delivered during the first quarter of 2021. So this will make Q1 and Q2 of 2021 very challenging for THT. I would expect a few negative quarters coming up unless demand in oil rebounds. Honestly, it won't get much worse than the next two or maybe three quarters for the company. So be ready for some wild price movements as people speculate on the future oil demand. This isn't gonna be for those who can't stomach some volatility in the stock price. Now, if you are really serious about investing, I wouldn't try time entry into this market because the second there is good news about oil demand and the world returning to normal, these oil tanker stocks will take off. This investment thesis has always been a cyclical event driven investment. What I mean is the age of ships on the water are getting older. So that's 20 years is the general retirement age of most ships. And the ordering of new ships is at multi-decade lows. This is a clear supply issue for the industry and is great news for the oil tanker companies. So there is going to be a time soon when demand for oil is strong again and the demand for oil tankers will be strong, but even stronger than normal because there won't be as many oil tankers on the water. So we just have to wait for oil demand to return and the oil tankers will be the big winners. DHT, in my opinion, is the best managed of the oil tanker companies. They have spent their money wisely on reducing debt. They also acquired two more VLCCs in the previous quarter at a time when buying tankers is cheap as no one wants to buy tankers since the spot rates are so low. I think it's very smart of DHT to capitalize on this opportunity. They are thinking two steps ahead compared to everyone else in my opinion. Now they're also planning to get some maintenance work done in Q1 and Q2 while the rates are low. This will make sure they can fully capitalize on revenue when the good times return. DHT said the company will continue to take advantage of the weak freight market to bring forward dry dockings and planned installations of scrubbers and ballast water treatment systems and expects scheduled off hire to be in the range between 200 and 230 days during the first quarter of 2021. Overall, the thesis is still in great shape. Good times will return and these good times will be far stronger than we all expect since the supply of tankers will be tight. We are just waiting on oil demand recovery news and that is the catalyst. Now regarding price, I already personally have a big stake in DHT so I don't particularly want to add any more, but if I see $4 or less, 
I think that will get me very interested. At what price will I sell? Well, that's a really tricky question. I think I'll keep the valuation simple and use a price to tangible book value to value the company. Currently it's at 0.9 and over the past 10 years, the highest it has been is a 5.5. So I think when it starts to reach a price to tangible book value of say three, I'll reassess the position. There is another reason I would sell and that's when reports are coming out that a lot of new oil tankers are being built. Now that will be a signal that supply is changing and it's time to move on. It's an investment I'll need to check on each quarter. Hugo De Stoop, the CEO of Euronav, had this to say. The last quarter of 2020 and the present market conditions are the, amongst the most challenging in recent memory for crude tanker operators. The market remains unbalanced with too many ships chasing too few cargoes. While some encouraging signs are emerging, like the price of scrap steel driving the ship recycling activity, traction with crude consumption returning to more normalized pre-pandemic levels is required to drive a return to stock and sector profitability. So more of the same story here from Euronav. Now comparing their rates to DHT, well, Euronav just didn't get the same good deals as DHT got in Q1. So their Q1 deals were, there's 46% VLCCs spot booked at 16,396 US dollars per day, and 54% of their sewers maxes were booked at about 9,000 per day. Comparing that to where DHT were booking nearly $40,000 per day for their VLCCs, it was a big difference. So considering this, in Q4, Euronav made a $54 million loss, which highlights how impressive it was that DHT made a small profit. But again, like DHT, Euronav had a great 12 month period. They 4X their 2019 profit. Euronav is also planning to do a lot of maintenance on their tankers in their coming months, just like DHT. So I expect a few more negative quarters here from Euronav and the share price might be all over the place. Now like DHT, I wouldn't try to time an entry into Euronav. As soon as we see oil demand improve, these stocks are gonna be very popular. The super cycle will begin and there might be a lot of positive speculation in the industry. I think we have some time until that happens, but it's just gonna to be too hard to know exactly when it's gonna happen. Now, I also have a similar plan regarding a sell price for Euronav. I'll wait until the price to tangible book value improves a lot. Currently, it's about 0.8, so plenty of upside, but I'll reassess when I see this thesis actually playing out. So on the short-term negative side, we have lower than normal oil consumption in the world with lockdowns still affecting demand. Oil producers have cut down supply waiting for this demand to come back. And there are too many tankers for the below average demand. So probably a few negative quarters coming. On the medium term positive side of things we have, average tanker age is really high and new tanker orders are at decade lows. This asymmetry will be a big driver of future profitability. Current low rates make scrapping older ships an attractive option. Scrap rates at the moment are high at about $18 million for a VLCC. That is at a seven year high. So instead of paying millions of dollars for an 18 year old tanker to be compliant with regulations, the high scrap rates encourage getting rid of the ship altogether. Therefore, it'll decrease supply of ships. And there has been three confirmed VLCCs and maybe possibly others to the recycling yard in the first weeks of 2020. Overall, the thesis is still in great shape. I know there is going to be a few tough quarters in the short term, but we just don't know how long that will last. Good times will return and these good times will be far stronger than we all expect since the supply of tankers will be tight. We're just waiting on oil demand recovery news and that's the catalyst. Now I'll have an update on TK tankers and Diamond S shipping when their results are announced in a few weeks. I hope you enjoyed this update and I will see you in the next video.